actually really happy to be here uh, in person after quite a while of a break and then from Zoom and everything. So it's kind of like, so thanks everyone for coming in person and, and for the people connecting uh, in Zoom. And before I start, I, I want to thank Bloomberg for continuing supporting this uh, seminar and actually making it possible. And I'm uh, particularly excited to resume learning machines after all this time uh, with Wei Shu from uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, Wei, someone I've been uh, kind of like looking forward to invite for a while. So this is a few years, uh, a few years too. Uh, Wei works at the intersection of uh, natural language processing, machine learning, and social media. Uh, we focus on language generation, simplification, and the kind of language that you see in like the wildest parts of the of the internet. And today she will talk about uh, data control, data and controllability in natural language generation. So I thank you very much for joining us and for bringing us back to some kind of normal day. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, y'all, for the introduction. Yeah, this is also uh, the first time I came back to life in like giving a talk in the uh, in the real world 3D. Uh, settings. Uh, it's always very exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to jump uh, directly into this. Um, so this is my research lab. So my research does do a lot of on generation and uh, ongoing work on the human evaluation and automatic evaluations. Uh, a lot of work on social media as well as uh, statistics and uh, semantics. So those are the topics I'm interested in. Um, and today I'm going to just primarily focus on the generation side. Uh, I'm just very, uh, will be very interested to talk to any of you after the talk about the other part of the, the research. I think. So today's talk, we will uh, talk about uh, controllable text generations. Uh, two works I would like to highlight is one thing is on uh, monolingual word alignment. So it's actually uh, going to uh, what kind of word and phrases being edited during the process of rewriting or paraphrasing, things like that. And then the second part is, um, then the next work is talking a little bit of a full pipelines uh, to do this kind of text to text generation using simplification as a, uh, as a running example. And the last uh, will go through some of the work of creating uh, high quality data uh, and showing, demonstrate that actually a lot of advances on more fancy or large pre-trained language models uh, does not necessarily save the world unless you have very, very high quality uh, data for training and evaluation. So there are some other works on natural language generation. I wouldn't be having time to talk in the talk in details, but just give you a flavor of the kind of the research uh, we do in my lab, as well as just that if you want to, uh, if you're interested in details, I will talk to you later. So one of the uh, first work listed here is actually uh, going towards more multilingual side. So doing both sentence splitting and paraphrasing at the same time. So you can actually leverage bilingual uh, corp uh, text corpus in order to create this kind of data by, for example, you have French and English, you translate the uh, English side to French, that gives you actually a very semi kind of quality paraphrase data, but better than a lot of previous work did back translation, translating twice. So you actually can translate just once to do this um, better. Uh, other language uh, tasks we look at is kind of neutralizing various languages. So we are using uh, some of the, uh, basically trying to make the various language or base gender or demo other demographic kind of uh, type of um, biased language to make it more neutral tone and make the subjective language into objective. Um, another ongoing work uh, pre uh, already uh, done is that uh, doing paraphrase kind of identification in scale on Twitter. So you capture like most kind of timely kind of topics and the language usage. Uh, then once you can identify all these redundancies on Twitter, you will be able to use that to, to, gen to turn a paraphrase generation model uh, very uh, efficiently more effective, effectively and also has a huge amount of diversity. I will actually show a couple of examples at the towards end of today's talk to demonstrate that. Um, other work, we, we did uh, some of the uh, style transfer before style transfer is a thing uh, back in 2012 when I was a PhD student. That's my very beginning of working on generation type of tasks. So uh, we actually did on the Shakespeare and modern English uh, transformation between the two. Um, so the running uh, 
my favorite text generation task I will uh, focus on today is uh, called text gen simplification. So the goal of the task is just rewrite the complex text into a simpler uh, language. For example, this is a news article. Um, this is the beginning of the two sentences of it. And then you actually can uh, take uh, quite a bit of uh, effort to rewrite this uh, to simplify it. For example, uh, people can do this to simplify for school usage usage for, for example, for elementary school students to actually read about the concurrent kind of materials. Um, you can see the rewriting is actually pretty significant that in a way that you will have to split longer sentences into shorter ones. Some call, sometimes their deletion will happen, right? And then some of the deletion will happen to the entire sentence that kind of more on the document level. Here are demonstrating the deletion happened on the sentence level. And with that deletion, it's normally not sufficient to simplify. So you're actually going to rephrase it, sometimes reordering it in order to achieve the effect, right? Um, so this uh, is kind of the task we are, we are really uh, interested in looking at. So this in together is more like a text, text to text generation process. Um, somewhere, it's now kind of a story generation and condition. And now it's just more like a free form of generation. It's a super confined generation. And it's also not a, like summarization, right? So this is kind of happen on the document level for sure, but it's not like re by reduction of uh, material, but rather this is require kind of really professional what level of rewriting in order to achieve. Actually professional editors do do this uh, for a living. So there's a company, Newsella, uh, actually, our uh, head office is in New York City and uh, San Francisco. When the uh, first uh, time I found this data set is actually at the time I was always, um, couldn't find any useful data. I was planning to cross out my way through this. It took about one US dollar to generate one sentence simplification on among them intensive Turk. Uh, until I kind of uh, searched the internet to dig out the last page of search result on Google, uh, I found this company when they were rather tiny, there were less than 20 people at the time. Uh, they actually produced this like simplified news articles for school use in the US. It's actually very popular. If you, if nowadays like even some uh, undergraduate join my research group, they say, oh, I actually use it when I was a, uh, like a high school kid and things like that. So they actually professionally simplify news article into uh, four different kind of readability levels for high school, middle school, and elementary school. So we do use this as a kind of a gold standard for this particular task. For style trans uh, transfer, for example, a lot of style transfer tasks or other kind of text generation, kind of this confined form of text generation, there's no gold standard. It's very hard to say, oh, this is formal, this is informal, what is a good way to to generate, but for this particular task, it's like similar to professional machine translations. It's actually have a gold standard that we want our AI model being able to do. Um, why do this? I think it's uh, the reason is obvious. That's how people to read and write better. Uh, there are actually uh, kind of user studies, including my collaborators. Uh, they actually did it to show that uh, actually um, that's all part of hearing students may be interested in it as well. For a general public, like just for me, I really just want to just read medical document for, uh, for sure. Um, I found this very challenging for second language speakers, um, but I later learned it's also very hard for the for like native speakers. So, <laughs> so I just made peace with that. Uh, but I think my model do better than I do. Um, uh, yeah, that's the reason I want to study this. Uh, not only because I have very uh, important application, but rather it's a, from the technical point of view as a computer scientist, it's such a good test back to tell me whether my model are doing it or not, other than uh, how to evaluate is unclear. And they're very good training data, they're gold standard by, by professional editors, so that implies some of fairly rather reliable evaluation can be done a little bit similar to the machine translation evaluation. And it just covered everything, right? It's required paraphrase generation, it requires some compression, requires some style transfer. If you consider readability is a one of the, like a style, right? So it's kind of a super sad and very good test bed. A little bit of history on this particular task. 
people were studying this primarily for linguistic aspect, um, cognitive science aspect around 2000. And then uh, suddenly what changed is that 2010, uh, the Wikipedia released the version called simple English Wikipedia. So that made the, some comparable parallel corpus can be mined and being used to training kind of MP type of method. Um, but there's a lot of issue in that data, especially how people construct it at, at the time. Actually a lot of quality issue, but regarding these people just powered on this benchmark comparison of state of our model with the models. Uh, so I entered this about this time. Um, yeah, I found the basically in the modeling, you can trick the model uh, to better uh, deal with the errors in the data set, or you can trick the evaluation by doing certain things. So the, it's very hard to tell which model was better. It was really a roadblock at the time that using Wikipedia the way it is to train models. So that's why we start to do the new cellular data and all that. So that's how things move forward. Um, primarily, uh, of course, nowadays is neural machine uh, translation type of model, six to six model to do this. Uh, can be used as a black box, um, input and output. Uh, the earliest work on neural, using neural network is 2017. Uh, it turned out need about half a million of the data parallel corpus in order to train a decent model. That's a great amount of the, the, uh, the amount of data we can get from New Sela, uh, which is very fortunate. Uh, however, um, this kind of uh, standard uh, generation models, they are performing primarily deletion if you just train it out of box uh, for a very good reason, right? Uh, first of all, deletion definitely bring the output to be simpler. That's uh, almost for sure, you know, if you have some da 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 comma and then da 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 period, you just cut everything after the comma, you got a pretty good output for say, uh, at least can get a pretty good result from human evaluation without introduce much of the error. Um, you can see the numerical uh, score evaluation going up, but doesn't mean necessarily that is the most desirable uh, system, right? So these are some typical um, output of the models. So it turned out very few uh, new work going to be introduced for a average uh, input sentence of 20 words, and also most of the, uh, the model perform zero sentence splitting at a time. And uh, more importantly, there are actually a percentage of the system that will just copy directly the input to output. Uh, it's perfect, uh, output, um, but it just doesn't simplify. Uh, just lay the groundwork. Uh, we did uh, recreated the uh, the data by kind of doing better sentence alignment in order to create this parallel corpus. And this is the amount of data we have to work with. And from the Wikipedia, sim simple Wikipedia, you get a little bit another half million. Uh, this is uh, the newer data set 2020. This is probably the best existing. Uh, you can see actually you have a really a good position of what kind of uh, sentence level uh, editing are happening. So a lot of it does require both splitting and paraphrasing to do it. And there's a small amount of deletion and there's more like a combination of deletion and paraphrasing things can happen together. So it's a complex data set, uh, higher quality. All right, so that set to the stage. Uh, one of the first work I want to talk about is the Wono lingo uh, word alignment. In particular, um, it will look like this, right? So if you study phrase-based machine translation, you always need to do phrase alignment or word alignment. Um, but for monolingual cases, you can do the same. Basically the model are, have input is two sentences, and then you want to find the correspondences of the, the word, what happened to this uh, change. Um, more accurately, this task should not historical word alignment is supposed to be called span uh, alignment is more, more like the thing because a lot of times the phrases will really carry the changes. Uh, the model will look like this, uh, from uh, one sentence to the other sentence, in order to model the phrase level thing. So we actually kind of expanded the label space into uh, not only single word, but multiple words. So that will learn not one on one word alignment, but uh, one to many uh, alignment. Uh, you have a basically 
before neural network to do the scoring. So you have kind of the re representation of the word and the phrases uh, from the source side and target side. And of course there are difference and dot products. Then you can combine them together with a little bit of span representation uh, details to make this work better. Uh, then you will just use a semi uh, Markov CRF model to, to do the modeling to model the transitions, right? So most of the uh, word order may be preserved and not really quiet. Uh, and then you model a little bit structured kind of uh, loss like honey loss. Um, similar to any of the word alignment model, you want to do it both uh, directions. So you will be able to model more, man, many word to many word uh, kind of uh, alignment. Decoding are just like a dynamic programming as zero, and then you want to get the intersect or unions. Uh, we did a little bit kind of heuristic depending in order to carry out a little bit better of the alignment between larger, longer chunk of phrases that sometimes happens. And also one thing I want to mention is not entirely linguistic phrases, similar to the phrase-based machine translation type of work is actually, it should be a very fully, freely kind of not necessarily strictly follow your linguistic boundary is uh, important. Most of the previous work actually following phrase boundaries, but it wasn't quite the best thing to do. So we fixed that. Um, before our work is actually, uh, there's a few previous work on doing this modeling of word alignment, but actually stopped by before the neural models kicked in. Uh, that's why the performance you can see uh, is worse. Uh, so that is endowment data. That's our training data are actually uh, MP references. It's like multiple ref human references uh, for translation were used to create an original parallel corpus and to do this word alignment annotation. Um, this is created from uh, Xu Chen Yao's PhD work of the original annotation. Uh, actually, it turned out that he did cross the time. It's the point it was not good. We had to re-annotate it turned out to be a very deep, uh, it's called time consuming annotation. We do expand the work into multiple domains, really New Zealand, Wikipedia is, uh, this is for text simplification. This is actually for the bias language, kind of the, the uh, neutralization work. An archive thing I want to uh, mention is actually from the scientific feedback to help people improve their papers on archives. It's an ongoing work, but this is the early work we had. That's actually a shout out to Lillian Lee and uh, with Chen Hao Tan's work inspired this. We studied how people uh, strengthen the, the claims in the paper uh, using the archive uh, archive data. That's when I realized, oh yeah, you actually can get the revision data from archive papers. So that's a whole, yeah. Um, for the last model, um, I missed how it was parameterized. You guys think of the same model to the same thing, or is it trained and supervised? It's trained and supervised. So, yeah, the model are completely uh, supervised data with a few thousand uh, sentence pairs annotated. And, and so there's no, no bird or anything? There, there is board. It's right. actually from actually board and spam board you are using behind you, this. You fine tune for yes. Find on the board, not through the model. Yes, exactly. Okay. Turn out span board works slightly better. How do you actually use the CRF? Why don't you just do some greedy decoding on top of the first Yeah, without CR, CRF, it, it can work far, fairly well as well if you have the actually in the data. So actually it works surprisingly well for uh, out of domain data. So we only have training data annotated here. The annotated data on this are much smaller, only hundred of sentence to, for more for evaluation purpose. And surprisingly it's uh, work, work better than we thought. And then the new set like text simplification turned out to be much harder task just because of this rewrite I planned. So it's turned out to be challenging for other cases like Neutralizing, uh, they only sometimes delete a few words and modify a few words, so it's turned out to be much easier. What, what are these numbers? Is it just, is it a, a score? They are as well scores on uh, on the basically each uh, each of the alignment, just where. Oh, okay. So, so the 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
Do you have you are you annotated? No, just like this article. Do you have annotated the alignment? Yeah, yeah. I have annotated we have annotated the word more like a span level alignment. Uh, there's a there's a question on the Zoom chat about is the span alignment one to one or does it support one to one span to many spans? Uh, one span to one span, but the span can be multiple words. There's very few cases there the junk kind of a split in between, but that very very few. So the annotation will be just like a grid uh, grid of the same. Um, without the label part. Yeah, so we can annotate any kind of uh, shape on this word-to-word uh, -word, uh, grid. That's the annotation interface we fetch. Not much uh, annotation restriction, like how long the span need to be. I think sometimes it can be fairly long for some of them, maybe beyond like, uh, Four word that there will be five or six word spans sometimes. So those are the challenging cases. That's why I need a little bit of heuristic rule to do it because the uh, semi CRF the computation cost only support like three or four word spans at max. But the true data actually um, with the heuristic and also the data annotation, there are longer span like seven word or even longer occasionally happen. So for example, abbreviation, abbreviation of a, a kind of a organization's name, that's like, it's just one, one word corresponding in one sentence, a corresponding seven word in another sentence, things like that, that can totally happen. And others are more interesting kind of uh, structured kind of paraphrasing situation happen, that's normally the harder, harder case. So the work of this are really try to empower uh, the more edit based uh, tech generation models. Uh, that's kind of the underlying uh, kind of goal we had is to understand how human uh, do this and hopefully our model directly can model this kind of very fine grain level of uh, So talk a little bit about uh, controllable type generation. So in this particular work, uh, we are kind of separating generation, uh, paraphrase generations from splitting in order to kind of utilize the amount of data we have a little bit more effectively. Um, so we um, in, so we did the deletion steps splitting together and then did the paraphrase and after that more like a pipeline style. Uh, we did study how well the linguistic rules can kind of possibly work and incorporate it into a neural generation model. Uh, and also a little bit better set up in terms of evaluation to evaluating kind of the, the capability to handle splitting primarily. So uh, the linguistic rules is actually a very nice work from Nicholas et al, uh, 2019. I have been waiting for this work to come out for years and until this particular group did it. Because sentence splitting actually, you can just say all this comma and which clause, you, you, you think that Linguistic rules will work very well for those cases that the structure cannot changes that neural models often fail and there's enough data. So eventually, um, Nicholas um, finally got the sentence done. So they actually only have 35 handcraft linguistic rules and work really well. Previous work is from more like early 2010 years before this work had way more rules and doesn't work as well. But this particular uh, that of authors did a really great job. They can actually successfully split 92% um, of the sentences. That's fairly long and with very few errors. So here is their setup. They have uh, kind of uh, iteratively apply the rule to a sentence, and then it will come out of a tree structure of, uh, of the split. Of course, the harder thing is to handle the pronouns and then all this uh, split. So once you have this tree structure, um, we kind of recombine of the different parts of the tree to come out of the possible candidates uh, of part of the sentence, including some deletion and things like that. And then we have a ranking model to pick the preferable candidates. And also sometimes it's based on the purpose. Sometimes if you want the split, you can just directly pick the candidate that with the split in there. So this would be the human references. Of course, human reference can come in very different form as well. Uh, 
uh, during the scoring, of course, uh, during the test time, we don't have the access to the human uh, references, but during the training time, they do, right? So in order to figure out which one was a better one, uh, we actually rely on board score. Board score actually worked really well for the task. Um, yeah, compare the candidate with the human reference, but we do need to control a little bit of the lens. So actually the lens controlled uh, board score to do the evaluation uh, to rank the candidates during the training side. Uh, training is uh, uh, pretty uh, straightforward. We just did a pairwise ranking. So directly this wise ranking doesn't work as well. It's because of the many of the candidates are very similar to each other, right? So it's an intermediate process. So you have to do this very finger in the pairwise ranking, just tell apart the two candidates that's similar to each other, but not too different, but you still want to tell them apart. It's a straightforward pairwise ranking with the ranking loss. Uh, again, let's use the uh, lens test wise for score to do this. Basically, we record output, output with similar lens as the human references. Um, after we pick the better, uh, better candidates, uh, we will just uh, on top of that do the generation. So those candidates actually use for two purposes. One thing is to pick the top ranked one to be generate the final simplification, and the rest of them are paired together with the original uh, input. Uh, with, with the kind of the uh, human references to as, as additional training data. So you can increase the amount of training data you have for powerful generation. Um, uh, there are some uh, accelerate tasks, just like rely on the word alignment uh, in order to, uh, to kind of figure out which part of the uh, generation are actually uh, related just whether the word should be kind of copied into the output. Uh, and uh, there's a little bit copy control at the beginning, just control how many uh, word in our you know, input sentence should be copied, right? So the other rest, a lot of existing models or just like copy the input to add the output to trick the evaluation metrics. Uh, it's just a simple uh, token at the beginning of the model and it's a little bit of attention attached to it in order to do it. Yeah. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I feel like I missed something in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Part of the model. So the, the, the model is um, a parser in it, or how do you utilize that? Oh, yeah. The, uh, it's a, so the actually use it for both. So, first of all, it does uh, have a parser itself. It's actually relies on the Stanford par parser okay. to do the root based system. And then we did create those intermediate results. So, the, the root based system produces ranks. Are a list of possible splits. Yeah, possible the neural model to rank them. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, uh, do the top. And then the intermediate, non, not the only the first, the first top ranked one will be used to generate the final output. The rest of them, the good ones, will be paired together with the human references to create additional uh, training data. I see. Okay. Fair enough. So it's, so it's a pipeline, each step really is run independently of each other. Yes. Yes, yeah, it's a pipeline. We just want to know um, how far it can push the boundaries based on the amount of data we have. Yeah, after all, I'll just add it out exist, uh, unless you have the large prediction language like T5, otherwise it's uh, the amount of data is just never enough for, for training this, uh, the model. It's only half a million. What scale is it? Okay. Uh, half a million sentence pairs. Oh, that's, that's not too large, no? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's can do pretty well. Uh, yeah, it's can do pretty well out of box. I will show you next work. Right. Yeah, uh, but it will fail on half of the sentence. It will be great output for half of the sentence. Right. Okay. And uh, that's for only the average sentence, but if you kind of try to deal with a little bit longer sentences, uh, the system very hard for a system to do like the entire sentence perfectly well without the errors. Your system or T5? Both. Oh, okay. So this is a uh, evaluation uh, setup. Um, uh, we have kind of uh, different uh, different evaluation parts. So uh, basically, some are evaluating the capability of splitting, and uh, some are capability of basically 
uh, two deletion, just basically based on what Q and one last sentence. Other uh, from our only, uh, primary just doing uh, paraphrases. So previous people just match the combine this together, just don't really worry about it, just evaluate them as is. Uh, it's actually more important just to evaluate the system separately uh, based on the human references. So these are the type of model we can have. So the CT stands for the copy ratio. So the higher the number, the fewer kind of changes the model make. Uh, of course, to make more changes, the model take higher um, kind of risk. And these are some of the existing data um, method as well as the baseline models. Um, yeah. Uh, there's some uh, evaluation more on the numerical scores. It's basically based on the frequency and the density that's like how well the meaning being preserved. Of course, our model works uh, somewhat better than the previous work. Uh, more important uh, is of because of incorporation with the with the linguistic rules into the model, the splitting is you want split, you can do split. Uh, for, uh, the splitting model is not fully relied on the uh, the uh, the find them together to do this slightly better. So that's why you really want to split. Uh, even if a human uh, failed, the model can still kind of split. Um, yeah, so if you want to see the more uh, uh, specific results, uh, these are the evaluation <coughs> separated for three different kind of operations in order to make the evaluation, uh, automatic evaluation numbers to be more meaningful. So you can look up the, uh, our paper. Uh, just a little bit discussion of evaluation. So there are some ongoing work, but I'm going to talk a little bit of how people do it before. Uh, like many of the this confined condition uh, text generation has between sentence to sentence or one sentence to two sentence or two sentence to one sentence, the evaluation normally can now evaluate fluency and uh, uh, meaning. Right? Uh, for, like, for example, for higher generation, uh, evaluate in addition like diversity uh, sometimes, but for simplification, they are evaluating simplicity and then. The previous setup is just really human, just reading is like a five point Likert scale. And then people just like average just by the overall. Uh, clearly not a great setup, um, but that's what people uh, had had before. And it's for some time people have been using blue to do this. So it's actually uh, really bad because you can copy the input, have a pretty high blue score um, without changes. However, any changes will introduce risk for the model to introduce errors that can be fatal. So that's kind of a very uh, difficult trade-off that reflected by the evaluation. So the current method people use is the series score I made, basically a modification of the score, just like in incorporating also the input, just how many engram input being, uh, being uh, copied or, or kind of changed. Um, you can use this as a, as a training objective to train any of your favorite models uh, for doing this. Uh, ongoing work is, of course, is to train a more embedding-based method and a learn, learnable kind of a learned uh, automatic evaluation uh, metrics. So we are working on that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it will kind of finish up in the next half year or so. So we actually rechanged the human evaluation in my research group. It's a much more extensive better evaluation, more like a least wise ranking method to do human evolve and use rely on a human evolve, we were able to kind of learn automatic evaluation metric that it works better. But the currently ones our people use is the Sari score we have. Um, so you talk about meaningful duration. So I can think about like two ways of violating it. Like either I drop stuff or I add, like hallucinate stuff. Mm -hmm. so, you can, so it's almost like precision and recall. Is there like a breakdown of this to of many preservations? Is it kind of like plastic? No, I think that the previous human evil is very kind of naive in a way that's like, hey, cross housing workers, here are some, some examples, then you just read. It's very subjective and, you know, a deletion model just uh, have a little bit of advantage, then the people kind of change things a little bit more. Just like the human, uh, 
crowdsourcing workers are very sensitive to changes, right? So uh, it's not good. It's no one really spend enough time doing the human evaluation um, until recent. That, that's why we want to fix it. Yeah, so people have used uh, SARS score for a different type of uh, tax generation work. So this is actually from in, in Su Choi, it's very interesting. It's kind of contextualized sentence sentences in order to make the question answering much more or uh, more clear and uh, without context to answer the question. So clearly important for Google search, right? Um, yeah, others are uh, different ones. This is for splitting and fusion. And then this will was for actually revising the fake news claims to be real news. Um, yeah, people have been using. Sorry, what, what is the, I mean, kind of the, Uh, yeah, so it's actually a, just an n based matrix similar to Vars Blue. To, uh, the difference is, is actually ca uh, calculating the S1, the precision recall for basically the n being kept from the input to the output and being kind of removed. So the different statistics do the same output, so it's weighted in a different way. Uh, it's very similar in blue in the case that it's all basically calculating the n-gram overlaps. Yeah. And the, the difference is blue is only compare system output against the references. Okay. This is considering basically the overlap between input and output and the, the uh, and the basically input and references as well as the output and references. So okay. more like a... And, and just to understand that, you made some comment of uh, where do you stand on the like using automatic Evaluation. Where I stand, yeah. So um, we collected a human evaluation score, more like a ranking scores. So we are we can't train the model uh, already. Uh, we just uh, haven't published it. I guess. And, uh, you you think that's better, or there's a good thing to it? Uh, the the human eval is better, way better than the. I don't know uh, which which should be, which should people be using for evaluation. For evaluation, uh, so like for what so kind of? Three things, human eval, mm. n-gram metric, uh, pre-trained model metric. Which, where do you, how do you consider those? Uh, the better human eval, uh, we haven't released it, but about you. So I would just re definitely recommend, uh, recommend doing the human eval in the least ranking way, okay. the way the ones we are going to release soon. And then after that, I think the uh, story has its own problems, but the currently cannot give a lot of information. And then the new um, automatic matrix that toned down the human evil I just mentioned, I think that's probably the best. Okay. Um, But I think human evolve is like significant, like really needed to tell them apart. It's very like some of the hallucinations and, and, fa and factual errors. I don't think like the um, automatic will measured, uh, autom our train of automatic uh, matrix even fail or still. That's where we haven't published it. <laughs> yeah, we are still trying to try to feel things and see whether we can improve that. Like, you know, I just have to, just that's what we have. Um, so automatic uh, tax simplifications. Um, yeah, this is the third part of uh, the third part of the talk. I'm going to talk a little bit of the impact of and the importance of having the real high quality uh, training data. You probably already think, oh, there are already professional editors doing this. Uh, they are on the article level and they never rewrite it sentence by sentence. For say they wasn't like with the goal of training automatic model in mind when they simplify the news articles. So they simplify the way they wanted it to. So actually in order to actually get the standard training data, um, not on the document to document transformation, you actually have to uh, sentence alignment to figure out which part of sentence being deleted and what sentence got one sentence split into half. So more like on the sentence level, you have this parallel half was not being set on the document to document. Uh, correspondences. Of course, I think the goal in the future will be like a long form text generation that will directly operate on the uh, document, but it's not the case right now. So you can do this uh, for both the Newsela data and the Wikipedia data. So that's why this step uh, is important and also introduce some of the errors in the previous work. Um, 
Um, just a kind of flash of some other results. These are the previous data set people have used on both Newsela and uh, Wikipedia uh, on, in terms of alignment. So you actually can see there are quite a bit of the errors in the sentence alignment, especially they lose a lot of sentence splitting data. That's why previous models can now do split very well. Uh, with some effort of um, doing a fine-toned supervised model with some annotated data and with the CRF on top of it, you actually got pretty high in, in terms of the, um, the sentence alignment uh, accuracy. That actually makes a significant difference on the older version of data. So when we manually annotate it like uh, 20 and 10K for I, I got, uh, Wikipedia and Newsletter, and then we train the, a neural model to align them, phantom mean, uh, and then we apply to the rest of the unlabeled data created that data set we just talked about. And of course, you can just train any state of art uh, generation model. So this is uh, the annotation interface on Crossflower. Um, it is input on two sentence and um, kind of ask them whether aligned or not partial aligned. Partial aligned is actually very important. Those are the difficult cases that where sentence splitting happens. Uh, actually, one thing to mention, we actually did some work on the document level, uh, centralization. Actually, uh, professional editors actually do a lot of elaboration as well, which is a, a little bit understudied. Uh, they do is very like they actually explain the, some of the concept during the centralization. They add new uh, information. So. Um, uh, in order to make this work, uh, we just did a paragraph, uh, paragraph level alignment first uh, because they are very reliable, bigger context, and then we did the sentence alignment after that. Uh, very similar to the word alignment work, uh, we just uh, kind of uh, calculated this, the sentence pair similarities, uh, and then we put it into a drive in order to model the, the sequences or positions of the sentences. Yeah, so this is label transitions and that's the word sentence level similarity. Um, of course, uh, turn the on board. So the uh, result is uh, actually uh, make a, a impact. Uh, previous, all the previous work are using wiki large uh, from, uh, actually it's uh, not, it's combined by Xing uh, Zhang and the Mirala Lapata for their paper. So actually combined by three previous data set that people aligned uh, simple Wikipedia, English Wikipedia by three different other papers and they combine the three data set together to create it. Uh, you can see actually a huge amount of errors in it. So half of the data are not actually noise. Uh, only half are real simplification if you manually uh, examine it. Uh, 30 percentage of the uh, of the sentence are misaligned due to the alignment sentence alignment errors, and 18 percentage is that uh, the there is no simple the uh, readability level is the same for input and output. They are not really simplified. Uh, with the effort we made, it was uh, much better. Um, so about 58 percentage of the correct ones. So only uh, this is our errors. Here are just like input and sim output have a similar complexity level. So not really an error, it just didn't simplify. Uh, this is what I showed before the composition uh, of the kind of the combination of operations uh, human authors were made. Um, so you never have a combination of operations? Yeah, that's a good question. No, there's very few because uh, I think the, they either choose splitting or they choose to delete part of it to make it simpler. So to shorten the sentences. Um, there may be a slightly percentage that they delete maybe one word after it's split it or those that they didn't account for, I guess. Uh, that's the thing I think uh, supposed to be a personalized system for this kind of text simplification, just given the audience, they, do they want to preserve all the in information. For example, if a non-native speaker to read a news article, they probably want to preserve all the information if they are highly educated, right? But for the elementary school, you probably don't need the entire, the entire article. You want actually a significant amount of information. 
So ideally, you have this control of what you want to do, so you can make this very um, personalized system after all. Uh, this different model people have uh, have done. I'm not going to go through too much about it. Um, just showing the impact of uh, of the training on the early version of the model with the worst sentence alignment uh, and the new one. So the, this is uh, the old newsletter I wrote the alignment myself. It just based on the overlap. It's a little bit iterative results of heuristic. So it's kind of the procedure I believe surprisingly high. Um, my, my, we later annotated data and I tested my uh, simple sentence alignment I wrote years ago and actually worked really well in terms of accuracy. There's lots of the opportunities. So that actually made a difference if you actually have a, a supervised twin sentence alignment. Uh, it uh, has some uh, impact. Um, yeah, uh, training whatever models. Uh, the improvement, you can say improvement from model to model, there's more complicated neural network model very, very simple by design. The improvement by training model is not as significant as the improvement of training data to make a user a better training data. The impact is much more uh, more significant. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a little close to time. So everything is uh, uh, open sourced. Um, yeah, so some takeaways. Um, we do think the uh, word alignment probably going to power the future research for IDE-based generation models. Yes, it can be the same. Uh, people in a lot of new works uh, coming out, including some IDE-based like uh, the T5 models, uh, which is um, that's just the uh, archive recently released by Google. Uh, and uh, yeah, we. I think there's a space for linguistics to exist for generation, especially this monolingual languages. I think it's possible to do. Um, yeah, performance gains from better data are just like really large than the model changes. Mm, what lie in the future for text simplification for say, these are the errors we have. Uh, there are still a little bit fluency. Uh, I think the T5 is definitely doing uh, better. This is not on T5. This is still like uh, I run at manual analysis on the transformer based on models. Uh, T5 will have a little bit like of fluency, but I think the uh, hallucination and uh, this kind of anaphora resolution kind of error still exists. I give you a little bit time for you to read this. Uh, so models are doing pretty well. So it's the most recurrent model to change to most interesting. Okay, um, there's a kind of a pronoun being uh, introduced, which is really not good. It definitely simplifies the sentence, but it's not good. But it does say kind of saying something more like "send his say" and to make it like a different, a different thing uh, in front of, uh, in front, uh, in contrast. Depend on the context, this could be a good thing or could be a bad thing. Uh, and one thing is that they change the the biological burglars, which you do think that's a pretty difficult phrase, you know, but you change it to a more kind of a broader kind of concept of creators, which is correct. Uh, but is that exact, exactly mean the same? That's probably not true, right? This is much more um, more bigger a claim to to be true. So these are the type of model uh, errors that model are making. So that's uh, demonstrated a little bit difficulty of the of the task. Um, some uh, in, uh, if you want to use our data, there's a one of the easy places to to use the gem benchmark. That's a lot of uh, generation tasks are involved, uh, primarily for dialogue uh, summarization. Uh, and simplification is one of the new uh, thing they included in this benchmark. Um, other work I just promise you to show you the diversity of paraphrases in Twitter. So these are the um, the work we uh, improved this year to actually have an automatic identifier to identify tweets that are talking about the same thing, and then use the collinear part to to for paraphrase generation. So you can see this is something like even like a large pre-trained language model cannot achieve as human can, just how diverse our language are and how creative uh, they are. 
So they more or less mean the same thing, but have some of them introduce a little bit extra things. Uh, you can consider this as hallucination, but it can be good hallucinations. Right? So that's something we want to have. Uh, one thing of point I want to make, this is actually by my new PhD student Yao this year. Uh, one thing I think the different people should have made is that the definition of paraphrases should be two actually. There's a definition of the paraphrases very ambiguous in the previous work. Many people noticed it, but no one did anything about it. But effectively, I think the simple way to actually operationalize over this is have two definitions. One definition for paraphrase on the sentence level is that uh, for definition, uh, basically, so are they talking about the same thing? So you can use a very loose criteria to do this. So for example, for identifying information spreading on, on Twitter, right? You just, these two, uh, two tweets mean talking about the same thing. Even like when tweets have a little bit extra information, they are still talking about the same thing. So you should lose, use a loose, uh, loose definition for paraphrase for this. However, for generation, that's just not a right thing. If you cannot have introduced some actual information, that should not be considered a paraphrase. So people should use a more strict definition for generation purpose. So that's probably the real thing people should have done for paraphrase research going forward is to separate two kind of one straight and one loose definition. Um, that will resolve a lot of our problems. Um, okay. So eventually on the Twitter data, I'm not going to show much. It's just ours is better than others. So Quora, uh, just a quite quick uh, note is that Quora is duplicate uh, questions on, on Quora forums. Uh, it's unclear how they exactly collect the data. Uh, potentially they even use some accuracy rules or classifier behind it to collect them. Uh, it's always, a, it's just a blog post released by Quora. They never really discuss in detail. So a lot of uh, very few kind of changes uh, in this their paraphrase and they are all about questions. And my Coco is another large paraphrase data set that kind of more image captioning, but the same thing people independently write the captions, so they have errors. And this, the largest one work by so far, a lot of people do it, it's paro So it's actually not human written, it's actually by translation by MT. So that's why we went out to do the Twitter based collect to address this. Okay, so I think this is my last slide. This, this is nothing about generation. This is uh, about misinformation on Twitter. Uh, a lot of people study it and a lot of people do stance classification. Again, if you look carefully, every data set construction has pretty much fatal flaws. Regarding these people in the past eight years also continued work on those data set and created new data sets still have all this data collection and annotation issues. Uh, eventually they, they just more than over a year of efforts from my group, I like, so just redid everything from scratch, um, fixed every potential issues. Um, yeah, and also it's a very kind of diverse, other than just like a lot of tweets about 10 claims uh, or 10 subjects. So the commonly used one is rumor evolve. They only have eight events, uh, including Obama birth certificate. So although their data set are large, but but it's like a lot of tweets about one single thing. So this is our, about the same amount of tweets, but there's a lot of different topics and much, many of them are culture specific. Uh, yeah, so that's why we redid everything uh, for this one. All right, so yeah. Yeah, thank you for your time. Curious about sort of the opposite of simplification. Like, so when you mentioned like simplifying legal language, I wonder if you have the opposite. Can someone can you take plain language and convert it into legal language? You know, as a concern. I can see a lot of use cases for that. It's sort of similar in medical. I, in medical field, it's not as obvious, but I wonder if human description of their symptoms or lay description of symptoms might help generate, like, might support medical decision making systems. More technical. Yeah, yeah, that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful question. Yes, especially for the medical domain. So actually the reverse direction is actually very useful. There are some data set created by a Singapore group. They are actually, it's a uh, manuals for written for professional forces for the lay people. Yeah, for that data set, I have some one paper in the reverse way. 
for our data set is a little bit difficult because they're a little bit division. But I, we actually actively thinking of whether we can go reverse way. So when I did the Shakespeare work, I think I was aiming for the expert writing to stick for, for example, for, for us writing uh, papers, right? You want to stick to a certain, certain kind of more sophisticated languages. So you want to sound more sophisticated. I think that's why we also did archive data. Actually archive data, you can see a little bit people wanting to be sophisticated, but uh, actually ended up people are doing more simplification because I think the original drafts are written too complicated, hard to understand. So for the clarity, actually people are dropping their complexity. So I definitely think it's very interesting to do the reverse. And also will be harder because of the, all the pre-trained language model prefer the more frequent word output, right? So actually to be sophisticated is, uh, is trickier, um, but I think definitely need, can be, should be done at some point. So I have a question. So you, you have a lot of what came back relevant was the skill based on the setup. Hmm. So what's the prospect for like a other language? Because it's like, well, because not, I don't think you can get in the language since it's very expensive. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, there are maybe about 10 or so languages have simply uh, kind of parallel corpus. I would say four of them are more like the written by human. The rest are a little bit noisier. Um, yeah, I actually one of my undergraduates actually went to uh, got all the data sets for different languages from different research groups. Uh, we are we wrote a, we are writing a survey. Actually, have all the statistics and we actually read the data loader in order to make just anyone want to do this more uh, effectively. So I would say four languages have something better than Wikipedia, maybe not as good as Newsela. Uh, and then there are six or seven languages have something maybe more close to Wikipedia type of noise, um, about 10, 12. Um, uh, yeah, as we were writing the survey in this, uh, in, the, in the summer, actually one Arabic one just come out on, uh, on the archive. So by this speed, maybe there'll be 20 next year, who knows? <laughs> Okay, cool. So let's wrap up. Thank you. Thank you.